we've been working hard at the dojo to develop our training program, so you'd think I'd be here today to sell you on it. But what I'd actually like to do is to try to sell you on the three principles around which we constructed the program. And so even if you decide not to be part of our community, you can use them in your chess journey. Okay, number one, you need a structure to which you are accountable to. So for example, throughout the pandemic, I've had people coming to me telling me all of the things they're doing for their chess improvement. And what they're doing is they're scouring the internet, looking for advice here and there. And some of it is very good advice, but it's a little bit like people who go on various kinds of diets, right? They try a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And what, do they ha what happens? They don't end up sticking to anything. And there's nothing consistent about what their approach is. And so one of the great things about what we've done, and I think would be necessary for any kind of structured improvement, is that we've created a list of things for, any, for each given level of player, a list of things that you have to do. So, for example, uh, the most popular forms of chess improvement out there right now are doing openings, opening work, and tactics. And there's nothing wrong with doing those. But one of the nice things about our program is after you've hit the benchmarks for your particular rating group, after you've hit those, you are not allowed to go and do the tactics and the openings anymore. You must go and do the other things on the program. And so it's a little bit like somebody who goes to the gym and always does the bench press. They will eventually be forced to do leg day. Okay, principle number two. I like to call this the principle of plus minus equals. This is the idea that for any kind of improvement, not just in chess, you need someone above you to whom you surrender a measure of authority. You need a cohort with whom you sweat, you work, and you need a minus, somebody to whom you have to articulate yourself to. to you got to put your thoughts in clear form so that somebody can understand them, right? Somebody who's maybe not at your level. And the key thing that we've really done at the dojo, and I think this is really important for any kind of chess improvement, is we've created a system of sparring. Right? So you will spar your opening positions. There will be end games you will have to spar, middle game positions, and much more than that. And so you will develop a uh, cohort with whom you get to know. And, you know, they're your friends, but they're also your competitors because they are the people against whom you need to measure yourself. And ultimately, they're the people you're trying to escape from. You're trying to get to the next level, right? And they are too. So there's going to be a competitive aspect to that cohort. Okay, number three. Um, what I have discovered, and I am not the only person to discover this, is that the path to chess improvement really lies in going your, over your own games. <clears throat> and um, something I know as a player and a coach is that it's a very difficult process. It's often very difficult just to start going over your own games. And then once you're there, it's very difficult to know what the questions are. You know. What were the points at which we're going to start analyzing? And then how deep do I go? These kinds of things. And that is an art form. Um, and so a, a big part of it is if you haven't ever done this, this is a way for you to just get into it, you know, to get into the water. And um, the cohort is a great place to start because what it's going to do is, let's say you play a game, well, part of your checklist is going to be doing a post-mortem. And just in that post-mortem, you are going to get an introduction to some of the questions by seeing the game through your opponent's eyes. And if you, even if, let's say, you played an over-the-board tournament and you didn't get a chance to do a post-mortem, the cohort is going to be there to help you go over the game, to ask questions about what was interesting, what were the dynamic positions, and what were the dynamic thoughts going on in the game. And you might even get a situation where you disagree with somebody, 
And that's great because then you can spar it out and say, well, I believe this and I believe that. And in addition to just, you know, making moves, you can try to articulate in words what you think the dynamic of the position was that you didn't understand in the game, but now maybe do. Okay. And a key part of this whole process then will be then to post your analysis. And the reason for that is we want to have it in a form that is intelligible. You don't just want some gobbledygook of long variations. You want the variation to stop at a certain point, there to be an evaluation, and then some words about what you think is happening, right? When some words like, here's where I screwed up, here's what I didn't understand. Those are the kinds of things that are really important for posting that game analysis. <clears throat> you want it to be intelligible. Okay, and now I'm going to end with the one thing that will probably drive you away from the dojo. Something we are requiring our members to do, and there's already a mini rebellion going on within our community, is we are requiring people to play long games. And um, the, there's really a couple simple reasons for this. One, we've learned through psychological research that there's two kinds of thinking. There's a level one, which is the easy, quick things we do in life, and there's a level two where we're really sweating and there's really just more calories burned at this. And people avoid this because it's hard. And so we need that kind of thinking to take place in order for chess improvement to happen. So even if you think that you want to be a blitz player, you are still going to have to do that kind of thinking in order to get better at blitz because you're going to be developing your understanding of the game through that kind of deeper thinking. And a lot of players are coming to us and coming up with this interesting excuse where they say, oh, I don't have the time to play longer games. And it's interesting because one of the rules of the dojo is that if you say that, then we get to go look into your account and to see, like, let's say your chess.com account or your Lee Chess account and see what was the last blitz session where you had a binge going on and how long did it last, right? Generally hours and hours. And that's what it's going to take to play a longer game. So there it is. The Chess Dojo training program. We think it's going to be a great thing and we invite you to come check it out.